Bits of a bite, no Seid kann absosus haskata. U jer par matneris vera darza. Ins getashemin him ganzarani. Taran vera patrast kahvazer banali. Again, coming into your homes, bringing and sharing God's message, the message of hope and love, and reminding you that all things that we do are done in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, this Sunday of Lent, is known as the Sunday of the Steward. In Armenian, Dundesi Giragi. Dundes means steward, basically a manager, someone who takes care of things. You've seen managers in your bank, in your stores. In this particular story, parable, as they are called, Jesus gives us the story of a steward, a manager, who is caught doing some evil things. Interesting story. You'll find this in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16. And I invite you to read it, but it's a little bit difficult because the hero of this story is not a good person. You remember last week we talked about the prodigal son, the wayward son? He wasn't a good one either. You see, Jesus is the only one that is able to take that negative and transfer it into something positive. Remember in the Garden of Eden, what was it? Jesus was again the only one who could take it. Remember what was given to Adam and Eve? The serpent said, take and eat. Jesus later on take those, took those same words and said, take and eat. And he transferred the condemnation of sin into life everlasting. Jesus, in the same way, does that with these parables. Today's parable is an interesting one. It's called the Sunday, or what we said the Sunday is called the Sunday of the Steward. The, the parable itself is the dishonest steward. Now here is the guy who was caught in being dishonest. And so he was going to be thrown out of his job as a manager. But he thought to himself, he says, wait a minute. He says, look, I'm not going to go out there on the streets and beg. I can't do that. And he says, he says, but I know that I'm smart enough. I know I could do something. So he says, let me go and make some friends for myself before I'm dismissed from my position. So he goes and finds people who owed his, who owed his boss some money. He found the first guy. He's the, the first guy says, I owed your boss $10,000. He says, hey, listen. He says, write down 5000 He says, give me the 5000 Now, what is he doing there? He's made a friend with this man because when he gets out of work, he'll be able to go in and say, hey, remember me? I was the guy who helped you out. And then he got a little bit of money that he's able to give his boss. So he's really playing a couple people on both ends. He does the same thing with the second person who owes his boss some money. And slowly he starts doing this one by one with everybody who owes his boss his money. It's basically like what the American government did, right? When they lowered the mortgage rates and everything. But that's another story. We'll talk about that some other time. In today's story, this is the story of the dishonest steward. And the steward was dishonest, but he was clever. In Armenian, there's a beautiful word. It's called jarvig. And you've probably heard that. You can ask your parents, you can ask people what that word means. It's exactly this guy. He was very shrewd. He figured out how to make friends for himself. And so slowly, one by one, he's got all of his bosses, the people who owed his boss something, they're his friends. And his boss comes up to him and he commends him. That's what's interesting. The boss commends him, says, you did good. Good for you, because in your dishonesty, you were able to make friends. Jesus says those words, too. He says, look at the dishonest steward, because he used unrighteous mammon, which is the money, the unrighteous thing, and he made friends for himself. In other words, he insured himself in the long term. Now, what's this story all about? It's an interesting story. It's kind of an unusual story, too, because you usually look for these examples of these goody-two-shoe people. This is, again, two stories now, prodigal son and this one. 
world, we have the heroes as bad people. This is a very basic story about what God has given you and how you use it. You see, each of us has been given certain talents. Each of us has been given a life, the most precious of all gifts, the most precious of all inheritances. We have the ability to live and produce. And God says, take that life, use it, but you don't have a right to abuse it. Because in the end, we're going to be just like this, just like this manager, we're going to have to give an accounting of what we did. What did you do with what God had given you? The same way as this manager was asked for an accounting by his boss. The boss said, what did you do with what I had given you? And the man came up and said, okay, look, you had asked me to take care of, all of your, your assets. This man owed you 10000 I got you 5000 Be happy with that. Same thing. God is going to ask us, what did we do with our lives? Many of us are going to have a hard time at that point because we're going to have to take an inventory. And during Lent, that's the beauty of this Lenten season, we have that opportunity for 40 days. Not to wait until it's too late, but to take an inventory of what our life is about right now. What are we living for? What do we do day by day? Where is the important things in our lives? God gives us a set of instructions. God gives us this life to manage. Are we managing it properly? Are we doing proper things with that life? Or are we abusing it? Well, you say, I'm a good person. I go to work and I don't abuse. I don't, I, I'd have a drink every so often. I don't abuse alcohol. I stay away from drugs. I'm a good person. But is that all there is in life? Or is there certain things that we do abuse without knowing? You see, certain people may abuse drugs. Others may abuse smoking. Others may abuse drinking. But sometimes people abuse life itself. For instance, God says, honor life. Honor your family. And what do we do? We bring in work and we forget about the family. We forget about the sanctity of the family. In fact, we bring work home. I've been a priest for 30 years. I've, I've been to many people's deathbeds. I've got to be honest with you. I've never met anybody who had his deathbed turned to me and said, Dead Eye, do you know what? I wish I had an extra day to catch up on my work. No. But you know what? I've met many people and said, you know, at this final hour, I wish I had loved a little more. I wish I had cared a little bit more about the people I love all around me. You know, I know during this past few weeks, we've been collecting money, assets, and help for the people in Japan after that horrendous earthquake. That's an easy one, you know? You sit in the comfort of your home and you write out a check. You put it on your credit card. Terrible, terrible thing that's happened over there, but you're reaching out to them. You're doing something good. God bless you. Now, push it a little more. How about the people right around you? How about your family members? How about the brother you haven't talked to in how many years? How about the children that are waiting for you to go in there and spend a few more minutes with them? How about your parents that you've kind of isolated because they don't understand you? How about the relationship between your boyfriend and girlfriend with your husband and wife that need a little bit of attention right now? You see, the life that we have been given is a very precious thing. It is more precious than all the assets that they have today accumulated in buildings and stocks and bonds. All of those assets mean nothing if you don't have life, right? Okay, so wouldn't you take care of that life? That's what Lent is about. It's a time right now to take an inventory and say, what am I doing? Am I being a steward? Am I being a manager of the gift that God has given me? Am I learning to use those assets properly? The dishonest steward, he was able to take something as, as, as ridiculous as a few coins, as a few uh, dollars, and parlay that, as we say, change that into something positive. How about the life that God has given you? Are you able to take that and really make that a blessing that touches not only you, but touches other people, your family members? And yeah, through life, there's been many sour days, many difficulties. 
We don't get along with certain people. That's what Lent is about. It's the time to get along with one another. Do you remember a few weeks ago when we started this Lenten journey today? I gave you a formula for Lent. I told you to stay away from certain foods. But I also reminded you the words of one of our great church fathers, Hariman Heidegg. He says, if you're going to eat meat, go ahead, eat it. But don't eat each other's meat. In other words, don't get on each other. Learn to love, care about one another. It's always funny to me. People come up to me and they say, can we eat fish during Lent? Yeah, eat it. Go ahead, eat it. You're not supposed to. But if that's what you want to do, eat it. But what's more important? Be in a good reconciliation with your, with your brothers, with your sisters. You see, when we're called to manage our lives, to be stewards of our lives, we're given the greatest tools of all. That namely, we're given the ability to love, the ability to care, the ability to reach out. Use those tools. You do it in any other work, right? If you're a photographer, what do you, you have your tools, right? You have your camera. If you are a construction worker, you have your tools, you have your machinery. If, you were, if you're working as a dental hygienist, you certainly have your tools. All kinds of weird things that look different <laughs> in different shapes and everything. Those are your tools. You use them. God has given you tools too to manage and do the work that you need to do. He's given you love. He's given you care, compassion in your heart. And sometimes you may have lost that along the way. That's what Lent is about. Take some time to rediscover what God has given you. And once you discover that, be jarbik. Use them. Don't abuse them, but use them to further God's work, to further the love in your communities, in your households, and ultimately in the world. That is the call that we are, we are called to do during this Lenten season. And I invite you, I invite you to take it as a serious call. Because when Jesus gives us these parables, they are meant as stories, not just to pass the time, but for us to put our feet in the shoes of the characters, whether they be the prodigal son or whether they be the dishonest steward. What am I doing with the assets, with the wealth that God has given me? Am I using it? Am I reaching out? Am I loving? Am I caring? Am I having compassion? I remember Martin Luther King Jr. in one of his most famous speeches. He looked out at the people and he said, if you're going to be a garbage collector, he says, pick up garbage the way Michelangelo took the brush and painted that Sistine's Chapel, paint, painted the, those, those treasures throughout the world. He says, if you're going to be a street cleaner, a street cleaner, pick up the broom and sweep the street as Beethoven swept and made that music. Take it to the ultimate level, whatever you're doing in your life. Push it. And you'll find that once you start doing this, God answers back. God answers back with even more, with even more blessings in your life. You see, the ultimate goal of our Lenten journey is not these 40 days, but at the end of the 40 days, there's a very special thing that happens. It is resurrection. And you want to be able to plug into that resurrection. So that resurrection is a real one. Not just an event that happened 2,000 years ago, but a real one that happens in your life. Take a look at the story today. It's found in Luke chapter 16, the story of the dishonest steward. And I look forward to joining you again next week when we're going to have one more despicable character. It is called the Sunday of the Judge, and we'll share that next week. Until then, I invite you to join us on our website, apostle.net, where you'll find apostolic evangelism for an electronic universe. Until next week, I remind you that all we do is done in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.